Hey everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today, we're going to be working on a 2018 Jaguar F-Pace. We're going to be taking a look at, and I'll be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. This is what our hitch is going to look like installed. As you can see, the only visible part is going to be our receiver tube opening and our safety chain loops. So that's going to look really nice. It's going to give us that nice factory look while also giving us that sporty look from our Jaguar. So we're not going to have to compromise the look of our vehicle to be able to use a hitch. Now our hitch is going to be a steel construction, so it's going to be nice and strong for a long time. It also has this nice black powder coat finish to help resist rust and corrosion as well. Adding a hitch to the back of your Jaguar is going to be a great upgrade. This is going to allow us to use a bike rack. Maybe we're currently putting our bikes on the roof or stuffing them in the trunk. We're going to be able to make a lot more room for us and our passengers if we get a bike rack and just stick them back here. We're also going to be able to use a cargo carrier. Again, we'll be able to get that cargo out of the back of our vehicle. We'll be able to make more room for us and our passengers. Cargo carriers come in really handy for those big bulky coolers or anything like that. So we can get those stuck back here on the back of our vehicle. And we're even going to be able to tow a trailer. So that's going to be a great upgrade. So we're going to open up your outdoor options. Now our hitch is going to be a class three. So what, that's, what that is going to mean is we're going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is really nice because that's a very common size. So finding hitch mounted accessories is going to be pretty easy. We're going to have this nice reinforced steel collar. that gives it a nice finished look while also adding some stability. Now, if you move over to the side of the hitch, you're going to see two holes. This first hole here is going to be for our hitch pin. This is going to use a standard 5 8 inch pin. You want to keep in mind, this does not come included, but you can find one here at eTrailer. Now, I might be curious about what the other hole is. And that hole is actually for a J-Pen stabilization device. Basically, that's a hook that's going to go through each side. You're going to have a nut on the other side that you tighten down. And that other hook is going to push against our accessory to keep it from rattling. It is a great option, and you can definitely find one of those here at eTrailer. We're going to have a rolled style safety chain loop opening, which is going to be good because it's going to play well with a lot of different safety chains. So you're not going to have to worry about switching out your chains on your trailer. Now we can get you a few measurements to help you understand where this hitch is going to sit on the back of your Jaguar. From the ground to the uppermost part of our receiver tube opening is going to be about 15 and a half inches. This number is very important for ground clearance and to know if your ball mount needs to be in the rised or lowered position. From the center of our pinhole to the outermost part of our fascia is going to be about two inches. This number is also important for any folding accessories because we want to make sure they're not going to make contact with our rear fascia. And as far as our weight capacities are concerned, we are going to have a 6,000 pound towing capacity. That's going to be how much weight our hitch can actually pull. You want to keep in mind, that's going to be the weight of the trailer and the load included on the trailer. And as far as our tongue weight rating, we are going to have a 900 pound tongue weight rating. So that's going to be 900 pounds pushing straight down on our receiver tube. And that's going to be plenty of weight to get four, five, maybe even six bikes back here. But you do want to check with your owner's manual and make sure that your Jaguar is capable at towing of those capacities. Now, if you are thinking about adding some four pole wiring to the back of your Jaguar, now's going to be the time to do it because we do have to remove our fascia to get our hitch installed. So you can find that kit here at eTrailer for your Jaguar. That being said, let's take a look at the installation together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be removing our underbody panel. We're going to have three 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove here at the front of that panel. We now need to remove four Phillips head screws along the back of our panel. And when you remove this last one, you want to make sure to hold onto that panel so it doesn't fall on you. But now I want to open our rear hatch. We're going to have a panel here on the side of our taillight. We just want to grab a trim panel tool, kind of work our way behind here pop those clips out and then remove it. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. We now need to remove a 10 millimeter bolt. It's going to be right there at the corner underneath that panel. We'll have one of these on the other side as well. We now have a plastic screw that we need to remove down here at the corner of our rear fascia. You don't have to push very hard to remove this. Basically just barely put the screwdriver in there and turn it. And then once you get the head of that push pin out, you're going to take a trim panel tool, come underneath the lip there, and pry out on it. And again, we're going to have one of these on the other side. We now need to remove two Phillips head screws from inside of our wheel well. It's going to help to have a low clearance screwdriver or an attachment like this so you can actually get in there. One screw is going to be located here, 
and the other one is going to be just below it on this lower panel. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. We now want to peel back our wheel well liner. Might have to kind of work in like this. Then our instructions weren't very clear on this, but we are going to have a combination of Phillips head screws and T20 Torx bits along this little plastic mud flap. So we'll get those taken out now. Now that we have all that hardware removed, we just want to grab this and slide it out of the way. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. At the top corner of our fascia, we're going to have a 10 millimeter bolt that's going to run this way into our fender. So you just want to grab that 10 mil, slide it in here, and get that bolt removed. Again, we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now I want to grab some painter's tape and just run along our seams here. That way, once we pull our fascia off, we don't risk scratching our paint. Now you don't have to do this, but I highly recommend it. Now with an extra set of hands, we can start pulling off our fascia. We're going to start at the corners, kind of pull up and out. Now you want to do this very carefully, making sure not to break any plastic fasteners or clips along the way. So then once you get here, if your vehicle has wiring in the back, now would be the time to unplug it. To unplug your wiring, you're just going to push down on this tab and then pull out. Now we can set our fascia off to the side somewhere safe. We now need to remove this plastic panel here above our bumper beam. We have a series of eight millimeter bolts that we need to remove. We'll start on the end. Then we'll move down here and work our way over to the other side. With that last screw removed, we can lift this out of place. With our plastic piece removed, we now need to remove our bumper beam. We're gonna have four 21 millimeter bolts on each side that we need to remove. And then on each side, I'm actually gonna grab one more and just thread it in a couple times. That way, once we get the other side off, it won't just fall down on us. And with that other side off, we can remove that bolt, slide off our bumper beam, and set it off to the side. Now we just wanna grab some black silicone, run it around this opening to create a good seal. We wanna make sure to do this on both sides. Now with an extra set of hands, we just wanna lift our hitch up into position and get one of our factory bolts started on each side. With one bolt started, the hitch can now support itself. Now I just want to start threading on the rest of our hardware. Now I'm going to grab that 21 millimeter socket and just snug down our hardware. Then when you look at the side of the hitch, you can see here there is a little opening. So I'm just going to come back with more silicone on each side and get that covered. We're now ready to come back and torque it down. All of our torque specs can be found in our instructions. Now I need to trim our underbody panel. We're gonna trim three and a half inches wide here out of the middle and six inches deep. I'm just gonna use a pair of 10 snips to do this, but you can also use a cutoff wheel. We now have our underbody panel trimmed, so we're ready to reinstall our fascia in the reverse order we took it apart. And that's gonna do it for our look at and our installation of Draw Tights Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on our 2018 Jaguar F-Pace.